is anything that you want to believe. In terms of the placement of Mr. Shorman's knee, and would that explain anatomically why Mr. Floyd, would that anatomically cut off Mr. Floyd's airway? In my opinion, it would not. The law enforcement subdual restraint and the neck compression was just more than Mr. Floyd could take by virtue of those heart conditions. Mr. Floyd died from a low level of oxygen, and this caused damage to his brain that we see, and it also caused a PEA arrhythmia that caused his heart to stop. Do you recall telling them that the autopsy revealed no physical evidence that Mr. Floyd died of asphyxiation? I don't know that, I don't know what my specific language is, but yes, that is what I conveyed to them, was the lack of anatomical findings that would support that conclusion. Mr. Floyd died from positional asphyxia, which is a fancy way of saying he died because he had no oxygen left in his body. Have you seen any of the videos at the time you started to do this? I have not. I was aware of it at least one video had gone viral on the internet, but I intentionally chose not to look at that until I had examined Mr. Floyd. I did not want to bias my exam by going in with any preconceived notions that might lead me down one path way or another. It's not that he's breathing right here. There's no evidence to suggest he would have died that way, except for the interactions with law enforcement. So my opinion remains unchanged. It's what I put on the death certificate last June. That's cardiopulmonary arrest, complicating law enforcement, so dual restraint and neck compression. That was my top line then. It would stay my top line now. And in terms of matter of death, you found then, and do you stand by today, that the matter of death of Mr. Floyd was, as you would call it, homicide? Yes, I would still classify it as a homicide today. Let's try to bring back in Mike Crack here right now from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Criminal defense attorney Barry Monitor in the case and offering his expertise. Dr. Baker, all in all, your assessment of the jury's conclusions were different than the state would have liked to some degree, but it's still a homicide, and he still puts forward the general state's case that Derek Shulman is the reason that George Floyd died. Sure. And Dr. Baker, obviously, he's the one who hands-on did the autopsy. He's the one who went inside the body and looked at all the organs and did what a doctor does in an autopsy. In his initial, which he said, I stand by again today, as I did last June, his conclusion is that it was the cardiopulmonary, the lungs and the heart basically stopped working, complicating the subdual and restraint. Now, obviously, the defense, I assume, is going to try and make an argument that what his findings are are basically at odds with what Dr. Thomas and the other folks had to say about the effectively suffocation, what they effectively were saying that Mr. Floyd couldn't breathe because of the pressure on his back, because of the pressure on his neck. And it was interesting that when Mr. Nelson was crossing Dr. Baker about the knee on the neck, Dr. Baker conceded that wouldn't block off the airway. Dr. Baker conceded the way the knee was positioned wouldn't cut off the carotid artery. And so it really is running a little bit against what the other experts are saying. I think the state had to put that out, even though it's against what their theory is that Mr. Floyd suffocated while he was sitting on the ground there. But I think they had to put him on because he was the medical examiner that did the autopsy. And they had to take it for what it was worth and try and dance around that. And so, I mean, they did a good job with it. I think Mr. Nelson scored some good points. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in terms of his own experts and how they meld together with Dr. Baker's testimony and perhaps cut against some of the other state experts. Yeah, the fact that you have the man that performed the autopsy going against the state's theory that there was lack of oxygen that killed George Floyd is a setup, is it not, to the state or the defense medical expert who presumably is going to come in and tell a story about drug intoxication and can also disagree with the state's expert. But when you have the guy that is, you know, that's his job, the medical examiner, to do the autopsy, disagree with all of those medical experts on the side, with the state side, he's a great bridge, is he not? Because it's not 
just now the defense is actually going to say this, and the state says this. You've got this guy who's a guy in the middle. Absolutely. And, and what he's done is he's opened the door. He's opened the door. And I like, I like what you said about, about, about making that bridge. And it's a great metaphor for how the, the, I anticipate the defense is going to use Dr. Baker's testimony. So they're going to try and try and move away from this theory of the, of the uh, positional asphyxiation uh, effectively suffocating uh, into some underlying heart condition. Um, obviously, Mr. Nelson has spent a great deal of time talking about Mr. Ford's hypertension, about the occluded uh, coronary arteries, 190% block, 175% block, and the fact that his heart was already enlarged uh, due to the hypertension that it was bigger and had to work much harder. And so, yeah, that's a great metaphor of bridging the, 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 uh, the issue between what the other experts have said and what we anticipate that Mr. Nelson's experts are going to say about uh, how this could be going very well with coronary incidents unrelated to uh, what was going on there. I think the tough part that is going to be, um, I think the state is going to be arguing but for, and that was uh, what they're going to say, yeah, but, but for, and this is what I think Dr. Baker had testified to last week was, you know, but for uh, Mr. Uh, and the police restraining Mr. Ford, and he said something to the effect of he just couldn't take it, his heart couldn't take the stress, which gets into, into the eggshell plaintiff issue of the police have to take them as they find him, if he's particularly susceptible to being injured or death because of his precarious medical condition, they've got to take him as they find him. Now, that could meld in with the reasonable, so, uh, reasonableness of use of force, but it's still obviously going to be uh, an, an issue for them. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, we'll watch it all play out together uh, this afternoon. Remind everybody that uh, we're expecting the state of Minnesota to potentially rest after two more witnesses. One is another use of force expert, which is expect he's expected to take the stand, a guy by the name of uh, Seth Stoughton, um, first, and then they will end the stand with a family member of George Floyd to reinforce to this jury that this was a life that was very important for many people um, and that life was lost. That will be how they end their case in chief and we expect that event to happen at some point this afternoon. Let's step aside take a break. When we come back, the Daily Sidebar. Talk to the anchors, they're all coming together. We'll talk about what happened today and what we're expecting for the rest of the day and Judge Cahill's ruling, which I just told you about more of the time. All that happens to this. squishy because it goes in your vagina. You put it in, you pull it out. There are zero procedures because zero is the number of procedures we prefer. Anna Vera's annual comfortable, controllable birth control. Serious risks of Anna Vera include blood clots, stroke, and heart attack, which can be fatal. Smoking increases these risks, especially if you are over 35. So do not smoke and use Anna Vera. Other serious risks are liver problems, high blood pressure, changes in the sugar and fat levels in your blood, headache, and irregular vaginal bleeding. Don't use Anna Vera if you have certain cancers. Unexplained vaginal bleeding, allergies of the ingredients, are taking hepatitis C drugs, or are pregnant. It's time we stop apologizing and start demanding more from our birth control. Ask your doctor about Anna Vera. Do we really need a sign for hate crime and love? Yes. The answer is no. I can't help your homeowners not become their parents. Yeah, no. Look, home birth. Yeah. Why hate it? Yeah, it just takes practice. Give it a shot. Yeah. You hear that? Yeah. It's a constant battle. We're going to open a PDF 
Who's next? Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can't save you money when you buy the home and all of us. No cussing, no cussing, and no cussing. If you printed out directions to get here today, you're in the right place. My seminars are a great tool to help young homeowners start turning into their parents. Now remember, they're not programs, they're TV shows. <laughs> you woke up early, no one cares. Yes. <laughs> you woke up early, no one cares.